Hi guys, and welcome to Serology, a weekly conversation amongst friends regarding what's currently on the small and sometimes big screen and what might have trended in the past with me, Lady Alexa, a self-proclaimed TV addict, dreamer, and sucker for romantic shows, and my charismatic yet sarcastic co-host Rich the Hot Broccoli, also a TV addict, cat lover, and monster sculptor. And welcome back to another episode of Seriology. What's up, Siri lovers? How are you guys? I've missed you. I feel like it's yeah. been forever. Uh, Even... It's only because we haven't recorded in a while. Yeah, I feel you I guys... mean, our episodes keep going out every week. <laughs> exactly. You guys keep hearing us, but I haven't seen Rich. Well, we haven't seen each other in over in a, a week. Quite a bit, like a week, yeah. Yeah, that, that yeah, is Yeah, for a while much. there, we were shotgunning those the recordings. Yeah. What What the heck, man? Well, welcome to a special edition midweek Emmy post show. Exactly. The Emmys were, pardon, Emmys were this past um, Sunday and they were very fun. I want to say a special thanks to everybody who live tweeted with us. It was yeah. really fun. Yep. I We both threw things out there I and it was a nice back and forth. I can, uh, LA, I cannot believe that this is the 71st emmy award show <laughs> like i i didn't even think tv was around that long i don't for them to have 71 years worth of shows i don't know i i, I you know i've never paid attention to the to the number i didn't hear the oscars it's really old i think like the, the first one was in 1949 holy crap my... yeah america wasn't even invented yet <laughs> <laughs> Like America maybe, wasn't invented until 1952. Baby in boomers were starting to walk. Is it the baby boomer generation? Baby boomers started to walk at that time. We're starting to no, walk. No, no. My parents' generation, the baby boomers, the 1950s, born 1950s. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 1949. Right around the baby uh, boomer yeah, time then. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. How do you want to handle the show tonight? Do you want us, like, because if we were having a bet on picks, I totally lost. I don't think I got a single pick. Oh, me too. Me either. No, you got a couple on there. Yeah, I got, a, got a couple. couple, but I really thought that Julia Louis Julia Louise Dreyfus was going to kill it. Yeah. And she didn't. Yeah, she Which should've. was like shocking for me. And uh, I I loved, I know that you were just following it on, online, but if you can see a recap when she... So there were two things. Um, each show that was getting a what it it was their last season this year they did like a little farewell thing they did it with game of thrones and they did it with veep two big shows and she was in character through the whole thing and selena mayer is such an oh, amazing character nice. so it was really funny and then when she had to present um tony hale with i adore him and i really wanted him to win an oscar but the guy from Mace, Mrs. Maisel got it. Well deserved. Well he, deserved. Yes, he deserved it. By the way, guys, I'm so sorry. My cat just ran through something and he's making a lot of noise. <laughs> Odin is making an appearance in tonight's episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> through the art of toy. Yes. Uh, but back to Tony Hill. Tony Hill comes and he literally just tells her like, he uh, tried to remind her what the nomination she was supposed to say. She comes and she's like, and the winner is, and you can hear him say, Selena Mayer. And she's like, stop it. Okay, we already got over this <laughs> because she <laughs> lost her award. It was really, it was a really fun back and forth between the two of them. All right, LA, in our pre-Emmy show, I promised I'd give you one best dress, one worst dress. Because I don't. This is something I really don't care about. But you were so hell bent on having this part in the show. So give me your best and worst. You're so nice. I was actually not gonna do it because I knew that you didn't care. Well, but because I'm a damn gentleman. That's why. Oh, you're so <laughs> nice. From time to time. Um... <laughs> I agree. Time to time. My favorite, my best dress nominee for this Emmys, for this 2019 Emmys will be Zendaya. You know, I'm not a big fan. I've, I haven't been a big fan of her previous dresses for other shows, but 
the euphoria star just rocked the green vera one for the emmy she looked like a freaking princess not even a princess she looked like she looked hot <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, I know you don't know what she's talking about because we don't care about this stuff. Yeah, but she yeah. looked great. No, her dress, I think that she was the best dressed. And the worst is someone who I, I had no idea. Plus, she's from the Russian Doll TV show, which I know that you you liked yep, it. Totally, yep. Totally recommend. Um, Greta Lee, she was a, chi- a Chinese one. Oh, okay. She was the lesbian girlfriend on the show. There you go. She had this weird dress... Okay, so the way that they explained the dress was the actress made a bold statement in the shimmering midriff bearing Christopher John Rogers ensemble in iridescent pistachio. Is that, did you just say a something? Because I feel like you just strung a bunch of words together. Yeah. Okay. Um, her dress looked like slime. Oh. I'm not even kidding you. I'm going to show you a picture right now. It looked like freaking slime as if she she could have worn that dress to the Nickelodeon Kid Choice Award and she would have been completely in. Is slime still a big thing on Nickelodeon? I haven't seen the show in forever, but I'm going to say yes. Because <laughs> that started with You Can't Do That on Television, if you guys remember what that show was. Which one? You Can't Do That on Television was a kid's show or like a teens, I guess, show. No, I, that was not... Back when I was... Time. Back in my day. <laughs> yeah. But look at the picture. Look at the picture, please. I don't know. It just looks like a green dress. It looks like slime. I mean, it looks like a green trash bag. <laughs> but anywho, that, that is my... But her belt's pretty, I guess. That's not a belt. Or whatever. Is that her belly? Yes. All right. Her belly belt belly looks it's a, nice. It's a midriff, so it's a top okay. and a skirt. Ah, I didn't know trash bags came in a halter top, but let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> Back right. to the Emmys. Yeah, we're kicking off right with the big one. <laughs> yeah. Um, outstanding. outstanding drama series. Well, to we remind everybody one? here, it was Better Call Saul, Bodyguard, Game of Thrones, Killing Eve, Ozark, Posey, Succession, and This Is Us. There's a lot of big guns on this list. A lot of big guns. I want to I want to remind everybody that Mr. Rich here told me you're going to go for Game of Thrones. Yeah, I I'm that was surprised at this one. Really what surprised. What the hell even with their really bad last season and I'm going to give you a fi- like I'm going to hand it to you because they could have won way more shows. They were the show with they made history. They, with, they took away with 10. The majority of those were from the Creative Arts Emmy. So we're talking cinematography, um, costumes. costumes, makeup, and that type of thing. Because acting, per se, and uh, directing and uh, screenwriting, they didn't win any of those. Yeah, they didn't deserve it for this season. They won, uh, they won Outstanding Drama, which is like, okay, yeah, you guys deserve it because... Even I mean, with, it was a huge show. Exactly. You guys you it guys deserve it to say goodbye with that. But and and I told you Game of Thrones is gonna win. However, they didn't win as many as they thought they would. And uh I I've been, you know, I I was following uh bloggers and things like that, and one of the things that they kept saying is that the episodes they submitted, which were the final episode, were not as good. As let's say episode number three or episode number four, you know, those episodes had more chance of actually getting a screenwrite or a directing. But as a whole. Exactly. Than the last episode. Like, there were a lot of quotes saying that that last episode was a mess. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think it, it was a battle of egos. It was that episode was directed and produced and everything by D and D, so Dungeons and Dragons, everybody. Uh, yeah, no, not not that D and D, the other D and D, which is Daniel Benioff and the other one. You know what? I'm happy they at least got that one. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is a huge show. It's been a crowd favorite. Yeah, no, th- th- I'm glad th- Ozark th- made the list. Yes, <laughs> I'm happy about that. Okay, so. Outstanding comedy series, and the nominated nominations goes to Barry, 
Fleabag, The Good Place, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Russian Doll, Schitt's Creek, and Veep. Rich thought that Mrs. Maisel was going to win, which yeah. I have to give it to you. I really thought that it was a big contender. I thought Veep was going to win, even though I really wanted mm-hmm. Schitt's Creek to win. But the one that actually got the most Emmys of the night. <laughs> As a show neither of us have watched. And apparently it's about a sex addict. An alcoholic with and, a filthy mouth. And it, like, how have I not seen this show? And how is this a comedy? I'm sure it's like a shameless how, type comedy. How is this a comedy? This sounds more like a drama. <laughs> it actually sounds funny. I, I but, gotta, I really, because it was all over the place on this list. Yeah, no, no, no. They want so many yeah. things. It's not even funny. Uh, Fleabag, the winner of this nomination was Fleabag. So, guys, I think Rich and I will have to binge this show and yeah. do something because... <laughs> I feel like that's this weekend for yes. me. <laughs> so next, come on, Rich, this is all yours. This one's me? Outstanding limited series? Yes. Oh, you gave me the one with all the foreign words. Chernobyl, Escape at Denimora, Fasse Verdun, Sharp Objects, and When They See Us... We both wished Chernobyl would win. Yes. And it, it did win. So I'm going to say that we got this one. <laughs> uh, are we going with wishes or believes? With both. It was okay. a 50 50 chance. Right. <laughs> so right now we're two to one. You yeah. and Aline. <laughs> so I'm crazy. And well deserved. I, I'm crazy happy show. that Chernobyl won because yeah, I think me too. that they really deserve this. And it was such an amazing and well produced show. Uh, I had such a, I, I, I laughed so much when, when the creator of Chernobyl won, he, because the girl from Fleabag kept saying, oh, my Fleabag family, my Fleabag family. And he comes and he's like, well, Fleabag is not the only one with a really cool family. My Chernobyl family was amazing. And thank you guys for helping me create this. I'm like, yay, you (laughs) tell her. (laughs) But I'm crazy happy they won. I I really I really thought I'm gonna be honest. I really thought when they see us was gonna be yeah. was gonna get more awards than what they actually got. And uh, and the original five were there, like the original kids that were in prison, that were falsely in prison, were there. One of the speeches was a toast to them, which I thought was really nice. Yes, one of the speeches I forgot. I think it was Jarrell, Jarrell, Jerome when he won, but we'll get to him. We'll talk a little bit yeah. more when we get to him. But yeah, I'm, I'm crazy happy and, uh, that Chernobyl won, though. This next category, I'm honestly surprised. Like, this one was shocking to me. I haven't seen any of those, so... <laughs> I have seen two now. You, you watched watch... Deadwood? I finally did. Woohoo! <laughs> uh, it put me right back into that world. Aww. And I, like, I want to go back and watch the seasons again. That is so I couldn't nice. believe how seamlessly, because it's supposed to be 10 years in, um, ahead from where they left off. Mm-hmm. Like, it felt like they'd moved the story along a little too quick, but it felt nice being with that cast again. That is awesome. Yeah, being with those characters. That's kind of how I felt with the Gilmore Girl revival quote unquote mm-hmm. being being back in uh stars hollow for me was just amazing <laughs> yeah this next category television movie i am floored that black mirror won i do you think do you think i know you haven't seen it and we talked about it on the pre-show yes that how it was very experimental and i think that's my, probably why they grabbed it so what's it about a game designer a game designer? Yeah, for video games. What And what is the video game about? Uh, this fictional book called Bandersnatch. Okay. It's kind of hard to explain because the, the movie itself is a choose-your-own-adventure. What? Yeah. Like, you'll get to a point, and then it stops, and it gives you two or three options to choose from. And okay. that's how... Yeah, so I think that's why... It won is because it had that choose your own adventure experimentation with it. Okay. But I don't feel like as the movie as a whole was that great. The experience was. So you think Deadwood would have been a bigger... No, no? I don't think so. Nope. 
Even though you just loved it and said that it brought I you back? I didn't. Th I think the story went too quick. Okay. Like they had to bring, they, it felt like they spent 40 minutes introducing where the characters are now and then 40 minutes for the actual movie. Yeah, I still think Brexit could have should have won that. You know what? I have no idea about any of them. I saw a little <laughs> clip of King Lear and it actually looked really cool and I'd like to see it. But Brexit, um, uh, let's see. I, I might see it. <laughs> not sure. And my dinner with Hervé. Not, that I did not see. <laughs> I, I have no idea what it looks. But well, now we're going to outstanding lead actor in a drama series. Jason Bateman for Ozark. Sterling K. Brown, This Is Us, Kit Harrington, Game of Thrones, Bob Odenkirk, Better Call Saul, Billy Porter, Posey, and Milo Ventimiglia, This Is Us. We were all off on this one. Neither one of us. Yeah, we, nope. I, we both thought that Sterling K. Brown was going to take it. I wanted yeah. Milo, you wanted Jason, and Billy Porter won. Apparently, yeah. Posey's really good. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed I enjoyed his speech. This is a love. How was he said that? Oh was, yeah, this is an, uh, an award show of love. Yeah, this nomination. This is a an award of love, everybody. His uh, hat no, was awesome. Yeah, he was his ensemble was yeah, very cool. Yeah, that hat cool. was awesome. And he he was just like jumping, and Kerry Washington started jumping with him because he made history. He's the first one to win. I know he made history. I want to say that he's the first African American to win it, but I'm not sure. Nope, I think it's first gay. Okay. Actor. Okay, so he it's a double. He's African American and gay. So maybe, you know, there was something about this guy and Billy Porter accepting his award when he said, "This is for love, y'all. This is a love nomination. This is a love award." That reminded me to Lin Manuel Miranda when he won his Tony for Hamilton that he he gave the the famous words of love is love is love is love that's what it reminded me of and i thought that it was such a beautiful thing that billy porter did and i don't know it, it he made history so congratulations to billy porter yeah. I, I don't know what posty's about because i haven't seen that show have you heard of it nope not even i haven't even heard of it yeah <laughs> me neither so we're on the same boat yeah. <laughs> so next we have outstanding lead actress in a drama series Amelia Clark, Game of Thrones, Jodie Corner, Killing Eve, Viola Davis, How to Get Away with Murder, Laura Leaney, Ozark, Mandy Moore, This Is Us, Sandra O, oh, Killing Eve, and Robin Wright, House of Cards. I have to say something here though before we say the winner and before we go over the winner. I find it hilarious that neither Ken Harrington or Amelia Clark, I didn't even think of them as winners for this awards. I, I yeah. thought that I don't <laughs> even to me it felt like they were nominated out of pity. Amelia Clark, that was um what's her name in Game of Thrones? Um Khaleesi. Oh, okay, uh, that was Khaleesi. Daenerys. Yeah, okay. I feel yeah, like I, I, don't, it was, I don't feel like that was her best performance. They didn't this deserve season. it. Yeah, yeah, I don't think I felt like Sophie Turner did a way better job. Um, what's her name? Gwendolyn, uh, Gwendolyn Christie, who she played uh, Sir. I forgot her name. <laughs> the one that was supposed to always take care of Sansa, the blonde one that. Oh, the love. big knight lady. Yeah. yeah. I forgot her name. Oh my God. We're going to get so many Game of Thrones <laughs> fans behind us, killing us. I thought the two of them, even. Uh, even Arya deserved and it more than deserved Amelia Clark. more of the nomination than Emilia Clark being alone, because even there I feel. What's uh? Oh my God! I am blanking all of Game of Thrones names. Uh, Jamie's sister. Jamie's sister. What's her name? Who's the sister? Jamie's uh, Lannister. Yeah, she did not deserve it. She stood in front of a window for the whole season. Yes, but I think that she should have been more there than... I don't know. I, to me, there were many more actresses. There were better that, actresses, yeah, in this show that deserved it more than Amelia Clark. Yes, completely. Right. Moving on. But, oh, well, the winner is Jodie Corner, a Comer for Killing Eve. 
And it's like the one show on here I haven't watched. <laughs> Same. <laughs> but she gave a really nice speech, and she was very uh, proud. And I don't know what the heck happened with Sandra O's, her co-worker, and also nominated here, Makeup. But she was very pink. Uh, <laughs> yeah, sorry. Fun fact. This is pink not what is. we're talking about, so <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Outstanding lead actor in a comedy series. Anthony Anderson, Blackish. Don Cheadle, Black Monday. Ted Danza, The Good Place. Michael Douglas, The Kraminsky Method. Bill Hader, Barry. And Eugene Levy, Schitt's Creek. Aww. I'm actually, I love the fact that Bill Hader won this. Yes, I am not, I'm not angry with him winning. I wanted yeah. Eugene. Yeah, I wanted Ted Danza. But or Don I'm... Cheadle. Did you see Don Cheadle? No, of course you no. didn't. Oh, you were following <laughs> on internet. Uh, Don Cheadle later, after he lost that category, he came off stage with Kristen Bell, which they did uh, House of Lies together. It's a great show, Serial Lovers. If you haven't yeah. seen it, I completely recommend it. Uh, that they, Showtime show. Yeah, they came up together and they were taught they were gonna uh, give a, an award. And Don was like acting like I'm pissed with the world, yada yada hmm. yada. And Kristen Bell comes in, she's like, Don, I mean, come I I'm so sorry. I have never felt that feeling of losing an award. How do you feel like just they were making fun out of it and he was like, Shut up. Just, let's just talk. <laughs> But I'm happy for Bill Hader. Uh, yeah, and it's a it's a good show. It's a well put together, funny show. I find it hilarious that it's a comedy show about a killer. <laughs> uh, well, I can see that. I lo- I, I, yeah. I love it, and it's an evolution, like the next step steps of being a hitman. Yes. Like, what do you do <laughs> when you're tired of killing? Oh, let's act. Yeah. Let's just let's act. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm very, I wanted Eugene Levy, of course. Uh, I, I adore Shits Creek, and I think that Eugene has done a really good job, but I'm happy Bill won. So, outstanding lead actress in a comedy series, we have Christina Applegate, Dead to Me, Rachel Brosnan, The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Julia Louise Dreyfus, The Myth, The Woman, The Legend, The Woman, The Legend. Stop the sucking up. You don't know her. I don't know her, but I think she's freaking amazing veep and natasha leone russian doll and katherine o'hara shits creek the winner oh and and the winner phoebe waller bridge for fleabag <laughs> they were up for a lot of awards this year fleabag and they took most of them yeah <laughs> and they yeah. took most of them which is insane i i I really thought Julia was gonna take it, and especially because it's it it's the last season of Veep. This is the last time that she's gonna be nominated for Veep. It's not like she's gonna stop act. act oh no 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 acting. no! The the re, uh, she it's not her last nomination. I'm just saying. I'm just saying it was her last nomination as Selena Mayer. So that's why I re, because I thought that her as Selena Mayer was freaking fantastic. She she. She was such an asshole, but at the same time, a funny asshole. <laughs> I'm like, I'm sure there's already a pile of offers for her next venture on her coffee table right now. Oh, yeah, no, no, for sure. I, again, I know she's going to be doing a gazillion other shows. It's just that this character, for me, I thought that she was amazing. And yeah. Catherine O'Hara, I am, I hope next year she gets nominated again and, and she wins because she's freaking, she's a, a legend. Like, I hope Russian Doll has a second season. I don't know how they're going to follow up with that. It seemed like a one-off season series to me. Oh, really? If they, if they have a second series, yay for me, because I love that show. <laughs> and I'm glad she, she's on this list. Our next category, by the way, and sorry that I caught you, is that right now when you said the, I hope it doesn't get canceled. Yeah. On the Emmys, they made this joke of limited series or how they like to call it shows that, did, that didn't get picked up. From the get go, <laughs> and get canceled from the get go. <laughs> I thought that was a funny joke. <laughs> okay, so outstanding lead actor in a limited series or movie, Maher. I I always butch his, butcher his name. Can you please say it? <laughs> really, you want me to say that? Maher- I think you, Sheila Maher Sheila Ali. I think Ali? you say it better than me. <laughs> really? It's because I'm rolling my M's. <laughs> 
<laughs> Mahershala Ali, True Mahersh- Detective. Uh, Benicio del Toro, Escape at Danamora. Hugh Grant, A Very English Scandal. Jared Harris, Chernobyl. Jarrell Jerome, When They See Us. And Sam Rockwell, Fossey Verdon. And the winner is... Rich, give us Jarell the honor. Jerome. And this is the one where he... Uh, what do you call it? Had the, the, the five kids stand up. Yeah, he asked for the the original five. I, there's a name for them, but that uh, it's blanking. I was like, I don't know, serial lovers, what I what happened to me today, but I'm brain. Serial lovers, everything. hit us up on Twitter at Seriology TV if you know what we're talking about because we don't. Yes. <laughs> Leave but, us your comment or what you think we're commenting about. I didn't know he was from the Dominican Republic, though. Why? I mean, is that a thing? Oh, uh, that's surprising. The actor, the Jarrell Jerome. I okay, why that. is that? Why is that a su- surprising fact? I don't know. I just didn't. I didn't know he was Latin. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and when he accepted his award, he said "Gracias, Papa." Like he he thanked his dad in Spanish. So I was like, "Oh, wow!" And later on, Lin Manuel Miranda he tweeted how Jarrell Jarrell Jerome met him I guess a zillion years ago when he was in high school when his school did a show for In the Heights, which is one of the first. Musicals that Lin-Manuel Miranda wrote and uh, Daryl Jerome played Usnavi, which is the main character of In the Heights. And uh, he showed him a picture and Lin-Manuel was like, oh my God, I actually met this guy. So he reminded me and I'm so proud. Go for go you, Daryl. You won it and you won your award and you were really cool at it. So that was a really nice fun fact that I... LA, I've got to give you credit. I thought I was a TV nerd. You... Far past me. You, Why? So, so much stuff. Like, I'm astounded with how much stuff you know about these these actors and producers and directors. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, the show's really good, I guess. It had lasers. I have I have a talent for remembering things that I'm never going to use. <laughs> that are worthless. Like, that's me with pop culture. <laughs> like, if we were to channel the stuff that we do remember... We could have been doctors. Basically, yeah. Like, if I could replace all my pop culture trivia with, like, medical stuff, oh I could God. probably be a heart surgeon. I'd probably be a heart surgeon. You're a surgeon here. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Rich the Hot Broccoli to the emergency room. Dr. Dr. Rich Dr. The Alexa. Hot yeah. yeah. Page and Dr. Broccoli. Yeah. Page and Dr. Broccoli. <laughs> Please come here. The heart is stopping. We don't know what to do. <laughs> Yeah, let me just jump on YouTube, figure it out. (laughs) Sure, there's a heart surgery tutorial on here. Of course there is. (laughs) (laughs) But, well, go for it, Rich. All right, moving along. uh, Outstanding lead actress. Why why are all these categories start with outstanding? What happened to best? It's a a fancier fancier way of saying best. Best was too short really? and too boring, and they wanted to Really? Because outstanding still has room for better. I have no idea. I'm just yeah. trying to give you an answer. Okay. All right. <laughs> Way to BS through that, L.A. <laughs> yeah, it was outstanding. I mean, it wasn't the best. See what I mean? <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's bring this ship back to harbor. Oh, I think it's... A, I, I Right now, when you said that, I think it's just a nice way of saying that all of these people are the best. However, no, a better way of saying all of you are are outstanding, but not trying to denigrate and saying you're better. I than feel the other. like you're giving all the kids a trophy here. That's what they are trying to do all the time. Yeah, so I know. I'm just trying to okay. say that. <laughs> so really, we have to stroke the egos of actors and actresses who already have an ego. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Pretty much. That's all right. I, I think it was Jenny Garth who said it on, and I'm sorry, I'm bringing Beverly Hills 90210 again, but on one of the things they were like, oh my God, you love getting your ego pump. And she turns around and she's like, duh, we're actors. We love that. Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Um, so who are the nominees? And All right. Won? Outstanding lead actress in a limited series or movie. Uh, Amy Adams, Sharp Objects. Patricia Arquette, Escape from Danamora. All right, help me with this one. And you... You said it really well. I know, the really good Emmy. the last time. Uh, Anjanu Ellis. Anjanu Ellis for When They See Us. Joey King, The Act. Nisi Nash, 
uh, When They See Us, Michelle Williams for Fasse Verdun. I am so, so effing happy she won because I adore her. Really? I, Michelle Williams. I adore Michelle Williams. I think everything that she has done since Dawson's Creek kick ass. Well, I mean, that was Dawson's Creek. You can't, like, that's the bottom. But if you Everything see Katie Holmes. Everything is uphill from if you, that. If you see Katie Holmes or James Vanderbeek, Katie hey, don't Holmes mess with the beak. got. Katie don't Holmes, mess with the beak. Okay, I'm not messing with the beak. But Katie beak. Holmes got really famous because, in a way, she got married to Tom Cruise. Yeah, that was her only claim to fame. Like, yeah, she's good, but... But what the... I'm saying is Dawson's Creek wasn't the best of shows. Oh, God. So Here everything she got after was uphill from there. Sure. Whatever. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, even from Brokeback, Brokeback Mountain all the way to Marilyn Monroe, everything she's done has been on Yeah, she's point. everything she touches is gold. On point. She's like a chameleon. <laughs> yeah. And her speech was amazing it was fantastic because she gave thanks to the producers that allowed her to the liberty of doing whatever she wanted that it that it didn't didn't matter matter how many wigs she wanted to to use to make the show better they kept giving it to her she they gave her everything and she said that people needed to change because it's not it's not fair that women of color are winning less money than men in in this time and age it was a very activist and beautiful speech that she gave all around she not only thanked her producers for allowing her to make the best gwen burden that she could have done but at the same time she brought attention to this thing of yeah men still get paid more than women and it's not fair guys you're not seeing this but rich's face is like Hey, Me Too movement. I'm on board. I'm on board, ladies. <laughs> Hashtag Me Too. I'm on board with it all. <laughs> Dear Nate, I like my sort of your face was what the <laughs> heck. <laughs> By the way, I won this one. <laughs> you did? Yes. Oh, yeah, you did win this one. So you, you wanted, like three to one. You wanted Anjanu Ellis to win. and Yeah. Woohoo. <laughs> yeah, three to one on this. Okay, so all then right, here's next... a category I really do not care about. So this one's all you. Outstanding reality competition program, and I really wanted Nayla to win, but the amazing RuPaul's Drag Race, which I've never seen, but it looks really fun, won. And RuPaul is awesome, so that's all I I have to say of this. <laughs> and guys, no offense, I'm not a reality show person, and on our show notes here. It says, Anna wishes slash believes nailed it. And mine says, Rich wishes believes does not give a shit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> On the show notes here. <laughs> Could care less. <laughs> Could care less. Yeah. Uh, outstanding supporting actor in a drama series, Jonathan Banks, Better Call Saul. Giancarlo Esposito, Better Call Saul. Alfie Allen, Game of Thrones. Nicholas Coster Waldo, Game of Thrones, Peter Dinklage, Game of Thrones, Michael Kelly, House of Cards, and Chris Sullivan, This Is Us. I I am so and happy. And the winner is I'm Thrrr. so happy with the, this one. The man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Peter, Peter, yeah, Peter Dinklage. Dinklage. LA, I've gotta say, his hair and beard were on point. Yeah, they were. He's always Those were old. that was God tier beard beard. <laughs> I, I swear to you, I freaking adore that man. I think, if, like Michelle Williams, everything he touches turns into gold. Yeah, everything. Yeah, he better strike while the iron's hot with this one. Yeah, I know. With everything after. I was like, I don't care who else is on the list. <laughs> he needed yeah. to win. Mm-hmm. And he won. And by the way, Siri Lovers, he his award and Outstanding and the one that the whole cast got were the only Game of Thrones awards that were given that night. He is this category was flooded with Game of Thrones actors. By the, by, the, by the way, I have to say, this is a fun fact. Um, Alfie, okay, so usually the the network station is the one that submits the, the nominations. Like, we're going to submit this and this actor for this show. And then the Emmys review it. And then they say, okay, this we're going to choose this one. But you can submit. As an actor, you can submit. Or the network is usually the one that does it. Alfie Allen was an HBO didn't submit him for this category. And Alfie Allen submitted himself 
and he got nominated, which is a big thing Ooh. because he, in a way, yes, he did deserve his nomination. But I mean, let's be honest, Peter was always going to win. Peter is a freaking man. But I thought it was interesting that Alfie Allen submitted himself. And you think uh, that's kind of dickish or egoish? If the no, network's not going to no, go, let and, me just submit myself because I'm awesome. Yes and no, because... And the, the reason why I'm saying no, I'm going to say it later when we get to the Outstanding Supporting Actress with Gwendolyn Christie. It's a play. So when you when the show has a lot of actors that they can submit or actresses, they try not to submit all of them because in a way, if you have a lot of people from the same show, they cancel each other out. And that's what they tried to do because they already had Nicholas Coster Waldo and Peter Dinklage. And I, I think that HBO really wanted to for it to be like a secure thing. LA, is your cat making Jiffy Pop popcorn? My cat is being, he really wants to be in the show today. Apparently. He really wants to be in the show today. I think he's angry because I took away his toy. Which was making a lot of noise, Siri lovers. Yes. <laughs> so now but I have him. the curtains apparently he's playing with is making way more noise than the toy we, she took away. And <laughs> that I can't <laughs> take it away. <laughs> but, okay, so yeah, no, when, back to HBO, I think that they they wanted Peter to be like the secure thing, even though no matter who you have on that yeah. nomination, Peter they, was There was nobody. Win. There was nobody and... taking him down that night. And I think that Alfie just felt bad. He thought that he did a really good job with his... Being sad and broody? Yes. <laughs> with the way he died. That was a nice episode. Yeah, but the way you died as a... You don't deserve to be on a Emmy list because you died gracefully. By, by the way, I have to say something that a lot of people were tweeting about. Um, when the Game of Thrones cast came on stage to give the farewell what's his name? I don't know the name, but but the guy that plays, uh, the one that ended up being the, the king, the Stark brother. Oh, yes. Bran. Bran. The actor that plays Bran was not on stage. He was sitting down with, like, uh, the producers and uh, and Sammy. Samuel. Samuel. You were the one who ended up being the king. Shouldn't you be? <laughs> you got the throne you should be there with everybody <laughs> but he was not uh so next yeah that's i don't i think it's a 50 50 you can have your ego stroke or if you really felt like you did such a good job and your network didn't submit your name you can I don't submit feel yourself. like he was one of the top three best actors in that season who will be your third one if you take uh... him out Took him out. Sam. Samuel? Okay. Yeah. There you go. But even still, he didn't have much of a role. I don't think Sam Sam had a... Much of a role as he usually does. Other than telling... I think I'm just being biased because I loved his character. Yeah, I think that other than telling this guy that, dude, you're sleeping with your aunt. <laughs> yeah. And your parent, your, parent, your dad True. is not who you really thought you was. True. That's basically... The whole thing he did this year, this this season. But I love the character. I really love him. I think yeah. that, whatever. So I thought the big, even the big. I'm sorry, guys. I'm we need to really have, getting on this. Yeah, we need to have a Game of Thrones show yeah. just to fighting on Game of Thrones. Yeah, here. <laughs> like even that big Viking dude was had a better role than he, the Viking dude actually had more. Yeah, more lines than than both Alfie Allen and. Yeah. The guy that played like Sam Alfie Bull. Allen's been playing a sad guy for three seasons. With no balls. Yeah. Ball <laughs> sad guy. With no balls. Uh, okay, so outstanding supporting actress in a drama series. Gwendolyn Christie, Game of Thrones. Lena Headey, Game of Thrones. Sophie Turner, Game of Thrones. Macy Williams, Game of Thrones. Fiona Show, Killing Eve. And Julia Garner, Ozark. So this is what I wanted to say. Gwendolyn Christie, who played uh, Sir Sir Brienne of Tarth, Brienne. <laughs> okay, so Gwendolyn Christie, who played Sir Brienne of Tarth, and by the way, I think that her character is one of those that 
on Game of Thrones just grew so much. And in this last season, she had a very important, she had, she had a very big arc, I feel. But even her just standing in a scene, she had such a, she has such a commanding presence. And by the way, like she doesn't have to say anything. She just needs to stand next to people in yeah. any scene. Yeah, she's huge. Yeah, and she was dressed in this Gucci dress that looked as if she was Jesus. So everybody was loving it. She was God Almighty. It was very Game of Thronesy. Yes, I, I I thought that if there was some, if there was one person who could have pulled that off, was her. Like anyone else dressed that way would have been killed by the fashion police. Yeah. But I like that she like pulled away any kind of sexuality that these red carpet dresses usually have. Yes, she she nailed it. And uh, so Game of Thrones, uh, Game of Thrones, HBO didn't submit her name for an Emmy nomination, and she submitted herself. She went there and she said, "You know what? My character deserves at least to be submitted, at least to be considered." For a nomination. I can't believe, like, the Academy, because I'm looking at this list, and it's out of the six people, four of them are gamer. Th- like, how... That's Is what, there any other actresses in other shows? That's what, in a way, Game of Thrones wanted to avoid, which was to cancel each other out. Look, I thought Gwendolyn Christie did a great job. However, I really wanted Sophie Turner to take it, because I did think... I do think that... Sophie did such an amazing job this season. Like, one of the few actresses that actually pulled through and had a really good arc and, you know... Heavy strength after everything she's been through, blah, blah, blah. Exactly. It was her. Because not even Arya. I think that Arya didn't do shit on this season. She could have done so much more on this season and she didn't do it. That's how I feel with Arya. So I really wanted Sophie to take it, but... They cancel each other out, and Julia Garner took it. I have I've never seen Ozark, but I've heard really good things from you. Yeah, she, yes, she deserved it. I don't think Lee, uh, Lena needed to be on this list because she stood in front of a window for all for the whole season. <laughs> but yeah, I, you see, I think that her name could have been taken out. Mm-hmm. Macy Williams could have been taken out. I think that the, from this, from the four Game of Thrones nominees. Gwendolyn Christie and Sophie Turner were actually a two. Yeah, that... there could have been other actresses in other shows that could yes. have had a shot at this. Like I this next category, it. same thing. Like even though it's a show that I love, uh, it's right now we're at Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Comedy Series. And we got Anthony Kerrigan from Barry, Stephen Root from Barry, Henry Winkler from Barry, then Alan Arkin from The Krem- Kreminsky Method, and how do I say his name? Tony Shalhub. Shalhub. Shaloup. Shaloup mm-hmm. from The Marvelous Miss Mizell. And Tony Hale from Veep. Like another category where it's like, isn't there other, other shows they could have pulled actors from? I mean, I have to give it to them. All Barry, all of them are really good. But you see, out of all of this, out of what, six nominees, three are Barry's and none of the Barry's won because they cancel each other out. Yeah. This is another one that I'm, I'm happy Tony Shalhoub won because I think that he plays a really good role as the dad on the show, but I really wanted Tony Hale to take it. I think that he has done such an amazing job. He did such an amazing job with Veep as being the partner in crime and the one reminding her all the time. And he just adore. well, his character adores Selena. Like... I feel he has a freaking throne of her on his house. Like, Selena Mayer is the best. <laughs> Did you watch Barry? Yes, I've seen Barry. Okay, so I would have liked Anthony Kerrigan to win. And Which one is Anthony Kerrigan, by the way? He's the bald guy. Oh, yes, he's good. So, well, um, <laughs> I have a friend in New York that knows him hmm. personally. And um, he has a this kind of rare disease, and that's why he doesn't have hair. Oh, it's not for the role? No. Like, he has, uh, he actually had to reinvent himself for these type of characters because he's got kind of a villainous character in Gotham. Yeah. But I feel like he's got this really fun, charismatic villain in Barry. Yeah, he's really funny. I agree yeah. with you. So I, I feel like out of this group, Anthony Kerrigan should have taken this. And it's not because I know a friend who knows him. 
<laughs> I was going to be like, are you no. sure? It's just because he's got that quirky accent and everything he says. It's kind of he, like he wants to be sincere about it, but it comes off as just so funny. I Great delivery, I should say. I'll agree with you. I, I mean, I think that he did a he does a, a really good job on, Bar- on Barry. He the way that he tells he's like, oh, I'm going to do this, but don't tell anybody I did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> with a camera on the first season how he had the little camera filming everything. Yeah. And, and Barry's like, please don't tell me you were stupid enough to leave the camera. Shh, shut up. The bus is coming. I never did that. This conversation never happened. <laughs> that Just was really, really funny. Quick, funny stuff. I think he should have taken that one. Yeah. I, I think right. Henry Winkler. I love Henry Winkler. But Tony, Tony Hale was the one for me. I really yeah. wished he would have taken it. Hmm. So outstanding supported support an actress in a comedy series. This is a lot of nominations. Why are there so many? Like Sarah Goldberg for Barry, Sian Clifford for Fleabag, Olivia Colman for Fleabag, Betty Gilpin for Glow, Alex Borstein, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, who, by the way, she was the one who took it. Marin Henkel, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, Kate McKinnon, Saturday Night Live, which. We talked about it on the on the pre-Emmy show. We still do not know why Kate McKinnon yeah. is in this nomination. And Anna Klumsky for a V. And Alex Borstein, which we both said that she's done such an amazing job. Yeah, I think she was my wish list. Yeah, she was there. And she she was the one you wanted for. And I, I'm happy she took it. I, I wish I as I said, I've been rooting for V through this whole show. <laughs> But I'm happy she took it because she she did such an amazing she's done such an amazing job, and I love that she thank the Amy Sherman Palladino and her husband Daniel Palladino, which are the producers and creators of the show as well as Gilmore Girls. You guys, that's why I like them. So next one will be outstanding supporting actor in a limited series or movie. Do you want me to say this or do you want to take a shot at it? Ah. Uh... Oh, I think I got this one. Go for Stella it. Still in Skarsgård for Chernobyl. Paul Bano, Escape from Denimora. Ben Wishaw, A Very English Scandal. All right, here's a Annette Black. This and 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 T Andy Black. Uh, <laughs> help me out here, L A. <laughs> Where would you go right there? Auntie, <laughs> Anta, uh, Ante, <laughs> Ante Black. I'm gonna go with Ante Black. That sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> when they see us, John Leguizamo. When they see us, another one, just all the same show. And that's and why Michael Williams. When they see us, they they cancel each other out. When mm-hmm. do you have that many people there that you they cancel each other out? Yeah, because I'm pretty sure I know that I I know that I wanted John Leguizamo to actually win this one. I think I said the same thing. Yeah, and uh, but. I wished for Stellan Skarsgård because I actually adore him and I thought that he did a really neat job at Chernobyl. But I thought, again, I thought When They See Us was going to take way many awards than just the one or two. I think Just for how two. many times they've been on uh, nominated for. And it was it's one of those shows that are very like Emmy. You know, that dense, some, thick drama. There are shows that you know are going to do very well on this just from the award, material from, from the covering. material like yeah. it but it was based on a real story it was mistreatment of african americans you know that fight between mean people because i think that even trump was involved on this whole mess i uh, again Siri lovers i haven't seen the show but it it had like everything and on top of that it was produced and done by ava duvernay who everybody loves she's a really great director and a great producer so it had all the things to win everything yeah it had all yeah pretty much all the pretty ingredients yeah it had like all those checklists it was like check it <laughs> checking <laughs> like everything before when the show was concept yeah in concept they're like where let, bring out the emmy list because we're gonna go through this whole thing and make sure all of it's in there mark my words they are gonna take way more shows on the golden globes yeah but Ben Wishaw, which, by the way, Tony, uh, Thomas Lennon made another joke with his with his last name, Wishaw. He, he was like, it's wishy-washy or something like that. 
Is it a hokey joke? Because a lot of times the jokes are so hokey on these award shows. <laughs> this guy, the commentator, just, he was killing it on those. Well, I thought it, they were funny, maybe. Okay, because a lot of them you not. said have been, sound like they were dad jokes. I, mama, nya, nya, nya. He's yeah. mean, you guys. You see, <laughs> you see how Broccoli <laughs> tweets me? <laughs> Hit us up on Seriology TV, everybody, and let us know if I'm not being mean. I'm gonna I'm gonna put a hashtag. Poll. I'm gonna at make not a, being mean seriology. I'm gonna make a poll. Do you guys think that Bridge the Hot Broccoli is being mean with Lady Alexa? <laughs> Which everybody's gonna say no. I know that. <laughs> okay, so outstanding variety talk series. Okay, so the nominees are The Daily Show with Trevor Noah, Full Frontal with Samantha B, Jimmy Kimmel Live. Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, The Late Late Show with James Corden, and The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. And the winner, to everyone's shock... Yeah, this was. <laughs> ...was Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, of course. I mean, it was between John Oliver and James Corden, on my, mm. in my eyes. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel or Stephen Colbert. There you go. I love, yeah. Jimmy, I love Jimmy Kimmel. I mean, but... there's a lot of great talent... But yeah. still, it is a talk show. Yes, it's a talk show. Like again, like I us, love like Jimmy right, Kimmel. Like right now, I think like Jimmy if Kimmel. We were to get an award for talking about award shows. Yeah, and I, I think Jimmy Kimmel has done a really good job with with his games, and it's the same with James Corden. They have done such a really good job. Like Ellen, bring in you know carpool karaoke. Yeah, they bring in a lot of what do you call it? Uh, interacting. Yes, interactive stuff. interaction. Like Jimmy Kimmel was the one who br- who brought the mean tweets, like actors yeah, reading their mean so tweets. Funny. That is that yeah. was hilarious. I uh, know, but well, next, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> outstanding host for a reality or reality competition program, Ellen DeGeneres for Ellen's Game of Games, Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman for Making It, RuPaul for RuPaul's Drag Race, Mary Kondo for Tidying Up with Mary Kondo. And James Corden, the world's best. Where, where, you, where, what are these things? <laughs> they are like reality. T- reality. I don't know. Like, does Ellen DeGeneres have a sideshow called Ellen's Game of Games? I thought or is that, that in the show. I thought it was more of a YouTube thing. It, yeah, it, is it like an online? Because the series? thing is that her games have become so popular that the network wanted to bank more on them. So this, these are all on. Like they're I, web, no web I, episodes, webisodes. I am not sure. Don series lovers, please let us know. Yeah, I don't even know like why this is even a thing. I don't even know the world's best, James Gordon's world's best. I have no idea what that is. So um, I think they did well. I know that Amy Poehler and Nick Offerman is like a building thing. It's a building show. Uh, I guess okay, but is it on TV? Yes, yeah, that is one it... is on okay. TV. So okay. Whatever. Right. Yep. Move Next. Along. <laughs> RuPaul won if we didn't mention. Yeah, RuPaul won knows. and he's freaking amazing. So whatever. <laughs> Outstanding variety sketch series at home with Amy Sedaris. Documentary now. Drunk History. I Love You America with Sarah Silverman. Saturday Night Live and Who is America? I have to say this. When Saturday Night Live won, they put a, they, the camera focused on Sarah Silverman. Her face was so pissed. She was like, you could hear it when she was like, fuck those people. Why? They still are around. It's the Yeah, same. like how? <laughs> I think they've been around longer than the Emmys have. Yeah, no. Saturday Night Live. Like, I, I'm, I personally have not watched a Saturday Night Live in uh, probably 10 years. Is it still funny? I, I have not heard one? anybody say, did you watch Saturday Night Live in probably 10 years? Um, some of my coworkers used to watch it a lot when, uh, how long ago? No, this year, this past year when oh, okay, Melissa McCartney year. was, was doing the sketches of, of the house yeah. speaker, of okay. the speaker. Well, if it's only political stuff. Yeah. I did see the episode for Kit Harrington and I thought it was, to be honest, I only saw it for him. I wanted to see what they were going to say about Game of Thrones, but even his jokes, I didn't think they were that funny. I think... Everybody on the on the cast acted really well, but Kit Harrington was not hitting the the jokes. 
I, I know it's hard for a drama actor to get thrown into sketch comedy. Yeah, that's true as well. I, I don't know if it's this one, but Saturday Night Live did win an award that was the host was Adam Sandler. And it was uh, an episode that he did to celebrate and to give not celebrate but like in memory of what is the the guy that passed away the one that did the the jamaican chris farley chris, chris farley? farley yeah that was such a beautiful piece that they put together for him yeah so that 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 episode won an emmy the producer actually said that it was a very special episode to see alan sandler who started in saturday night live come back and act with a new group and then on top of that make Adam Sandler was the one who said, you know, we should do this for Chris Farley. And he was the one who who tried to help and put that piece together. So I thought yeah. that was really nice. That was a nice piece. Yeah. Outstanding. Is there any important stuff? Any more of the big ones? No, I think so we're I feel like done. we're getting into like, yeah. Oh, outstanding writing for a drama series. Succession Juan. And I'm crazy happy that Succession Juan because I think that they did deserve that. I don't understand why this this category is one-off episodes. <laughs> it's it's one of those things that... You, but look, I feel Game like it's... Sh- Game of Thrones got the Iron Throne. Had they done another episode, I'm pretty sure Game of Thrones would have won. Okay, but what I'm saying is outstanding writing for a drama series, but they're only focusing on one episode for that series. I feel like this category should encompass how they dealt with the entire series. Because it says here, like, Bodyguard, Episode 1, Game of Thrones, that particular series, that's what this is up for. But how the writers took the whole s- series. Yeah. I don't feel like this should be one-offs that of the true. series. Like how they dealt with story arcs and characters and the twists and interminglings. That's what this category should be judged on i agree with you uh the best host for a variety for a talk show john oliver won and i loved on his speech he said i want to i want to thank game of thrones for always being the lead up to my show i know that it was because of them that everybody started watching me which is true his show will come right after game of thrones and you have all these people watching game of thrones already there yeah yeah you know you were gonna get a good and then they focus on Alfie Allen, and Alfie Allen was like, you're welcome. <laughs> it was a, a, a fun little Back and moment forth. there, yeah. All right, Siri lovers, let us know what you thought of the Emmys. Hit us yeah. up at uh, Twitter and Instagram at Seriology TV. Actually, Rich, Actually, what... go right now. I want them to go right now and like us on Instagram and Twitter. Not only say, like LA? not only like us, but also please guys, we beg drop you. Drop us a comment. Drop us a comment, subscribe, um, follow us, go on Apple Podcasts and subscribe and rate us. It's very important for us, believe it or not. Actually, it ca- every little subscription and rating counts for us to actually start getting, you know, some traction. And I know that you guys love us, so let's make this big. Show us how much you love us. Yeah. Get over and there right now. By the way, a little fun fun fact of the night, because we haven't seen each other for a, not, for a week. I signed up today for Disney+. Plus. You did? Yes. And apparently I'm now a part of the, of the first, of the, of the, fu- the fun- f- founder circle. Yeah. What a stupid marketing term. <laughs> to make you feel like you're not spending the money. It's actually cheaper if you. Yeah. Do you get a you, vest and a badge? When, to no, wear when you're watching Disney+. I think Plus. that I'm going to be paying six ninety nine, And if you subscribe after November 12th, you're going to be paying seven ninety nine. So it's like so, a dollar okay, less. So you get a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I I got a, a sweet Found deal Found the there. deal right there. <laughs> That's almost 50% off. I mean, oh, wow. But guys, it was so yeah. nice to see you. Yeah, and hope you enjoyed the you. show. Hope you enjoyed the Emmys. But guys, please hit us up on social media. As we said, subscribe, rate us, be there with us. Uh, we had such an amazing time live tweeting on Sunday with the Emmys. I'm going to put a poll up there and uh, we're going to try to be a little bit more interactive. We had fun. So let's see if we do another live tweet session. 
And guys, we'll see you next Monday with our Good Omens episode. Yes, Good Omens is coming and that's going to be a fun one, you guys. It's really good. Also, uh, I'm going to put a poll on Twitter from all of the shows that we spoke today and we haven't covered to see which one you want us to hit next. And it's up to you guys. So we'll watch it and we'll talk about it. Uh, Fleabag, Veep, uh, what else was there? When They See Us. I feel that's so sad. We can do When They See Us. <laughs> yeah. Let's do another depressing show. What do you say, LA? Oh, I'm up for it. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. <laughs> and October's coming up and that's my favorite month. And we're going to do a whole bunch of monster stuff. And I, I heart that. You guys have not seen him right now, but excited. he is like Super a little excited. kid on a candy store. Yep. <laughs> And we're going to have a lot of special guests as well. So that's yeah. going to be fun to have another. We had a lot of fun guests coming through October. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. That's it for tonight. Until then, you guys. Bye. Bye, everyone. Well, that's all for now, folks. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Seriology. Don't forget to give us a like on Twitter at Seriology TV. Send us a message about what shows you think should be on our bucket list. Or if you just want to leave a comment about how awesome we are. See you next week, Siri lovers. And remember, wherever you are, you'll always be in our TV hearts. Thank you.